This is Macro Voices with hedge fund manager Eric Townsend, the free weekly financial podcast targeting professional finance, high net worth individuals, family offices, and other sophisticated investors. Macro Voices is all about the brightest minds in the world of finance and macroeconomics telling it like it is, bullish or bearish, no holds barred. Now, here are your hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna. Let's move on to our post-game chart deck. Listeners, you find the download link in your Research Roundup email. If you don't have a Research Roundup email, just go to our homepage, macrovoices.com. Look for the red button that says looking for the downloads. Patrick, the chart deck is titled, What's Next for the Markets? Starting on page two, we've got the S&P 500 chart. What's next for the S&P? If we look at this as a downsloping channel, it looks like we're kind of at the top of the channel, about to start trading back down. I guess the other way to look at it is maybe this is a breakout that's going to take us back up to new all-time highs. The way I perceive this is that uh, we were in a market correction that lasted several months that uh, was at that 15 to 20 percent style variety that um, was uh, brought us to a pretty oversold state. And there was uh, bad news after bad news being thrown at the market and it failed to break down. So we had a, a situation where the uh, market had a, a, some pent up energy the other way and we got ourselves a good little short squeeze that has now slingshotted this market above its moving averages. But uh, I think that uh, we're now in a period where the sell cycle has been neutralized, but that doesn't make it bullish. My view here is, is that while we're very likely to, to stay above the 4,400 level, even if it temporarily for a day or two drops below there, but we should see uh, the market stabilize here and, and maybe even over the next week or two work its way higher toward 4,600. But I'm not so sure that we're going for a double top retest of the high. And so at this stage, I would actually approach this market from a very neutral perspective. I don't see a uh, huge benefit on the upside, nor do I see an easy short layup here uh, for a downside trade. So I, I'm expecting a little bit of a grind here for the next few weeks going into April. So no strong trade conviction there. Let's move on to the euro US dollar cross on page three. Well, this is where I think I'd have a little more conviction uh, because there's been a lot of re reasons why the U.S. dollar should have given back some of the gains and uh, and we should have seen bigger bounces even to 112 or more on the euro and we just haven't seen it at all. And with the current uh, trend in the euro and the way it's rolling, it really does feel like the downside window is still wide open. When you go back and uh, see the 2017 lows or more, uh, they're down in that kind of 105, 107 range, I think that it's very easy for the euro here to have one more leg down. And so maybe the US dollar bull trend is not yet over with a euro uh, potentially still vulnerable to the downside. But when we go to page four, where we're looking at that US dollar yen, this US dollar just has not quit against that Japanese yen, just ripping higher and just day after day grinding up. This is certainly uh, where we are seeing U.S. dollar uh, bull leadership on a relative basis, uh, and it'll be really easy if the pound and, uh, and uh, euro roll over here for the U.S. dollar to have one more leg. Let's move on to gold futures on page five. Uh, you know, uh, Eric, you were you were referencing just how you expect more out of gold. Uh, and while I certainly understand your point, and I wouldn't even want to push back on it, but uh, when if you just looked at this chart uh, and didn't even take into consideration what it was and simply looked at it for what it is, is that there was a very long and extended consolidation for over a year, a very bullish breakout to a fresh high, uh, one-year high, and uh, the pullback so far has been well defended and bought on dip and is holding above all its previous highs. And while, you know, you could kind of uh, say that you wanted more out of, uh, of gold in these uh, market conditions, I can see that argument, but this is still setting up pretty bullishly. And uh, if we can clear 2000 on the upside, I think uh, it's going to get a lot of attention and uh, that could drive a bull trend move. So I'm still keeping a pretty solid bull tilt on, uh, on my gold 
positioning. Uh, the uh, one thing I wanted to highlight, though, Eric, is on page six we have silver, and uh, and silver has been dogging it on a relative basis to gold. Uh, but after spending almost six months in an extended basing formation, we are now seeing that kind of sequence of higher highs and higher lows developing. And if gold uh, remains positive, this could be the conditions from which silver goes back to uh, its um, uh, multi-year highs in that $29, $30 range. So I still think that there's an opportunity here in, in the precious metals. Let's move on to crude oil on page seven. I think this is a, a really important moment here, Eric. I, I mean, I know you were talking about it in the market wrap, and I certainly would not would like to kind of hear what you think of my view. But uh, it was a given that we were from a very oversold condition that we were going to get a bounce. So when crude oil goes from 130 down to like 95 in a week, uh, it was going to have a reaction uh, in a bullish way on the upside. And, uh, and the fib retracement zones all lie right here in this kind of 110 to 115 pop. Uh, so the big question for me is what happens from this pivot? If uh, if crude oil has a date with 130 to 150 on the upside, the bulls w- uh, really do need to punch this uh, higher from this level right in here right now. Probably the most disappointing thing that could happen here uh, for oil bulls is it stall out here, and then it, if it if it does, then we might just be consolidating back down to 100 and then just grinding it. it in this kind of like 95 to $110 range for months. Uh, I'm not making that forecast here, but just pointing out how significant it is for the bulls to follow through here if they intend on, on, on running it higher. Well, Patrick, I think it's going to be entirely event-driven. The, this is now about geopolitics. The price of crude oil has already rallied a little bit too much for the inflationary backdrop and other non-geopolitical factors that we had in play. Add the Russia-Ukraine situation, and I think there's scope to go much higher from here, but it's because of that tension being in the system. If that tension comes out of the system because there is a speedy and complete and total resolution to the Russia-Ukraine, and it's it's quite a bit broader than just Russia-Ukraine. It really is the Russian tension with the West. Uh, if that somehow is just going to go away overnight, then we're already too high on oil prices. They got to come down. I don't think any of that is happening. I think that the tension that we're seeing is just the beginning of a new era. And I think that oil prices are headed much higher, but the trading is much harder now because you're, you really have to be banking on a geopolitical view, which is inherently very difficult to, uh, to anticipate or predict. Well, uh, when we go to page eight and I look at the gasoline futures, I just wanted to highlight that it really actually seems to be trading in line with the uh, oil chart. And we're at the same critical level here around the 350 a gallon level. So uh, just uh, I think overall, your your point is uh, is pretty bang on in the sense that it is uh, going to be headline driven, but it is still a very critical level on these energy prices. And it'll be really interesting to see what they do at this technical level. Let's uh, move on to copper. And uh, what I wanted to simply highlight here is that uh, while copper did try to break out that $5 level and pull back, uh, overall, it's still being well accumulated and holding up and still setting up for a breakout. So uh, certainly, uh, while you know we look at these charts that are bullish on everything from uranium to gold, uh, copper still looks just as solid. Uh, it would be really interesting to see whether or not we can see copper beaten uh, the 480 level and start heading back to its highs that would in my mind indicate uh, that another leg of a bull trend may very well be underway looking at uranium on page 10 it looks like we're almost at the cycle high well, exactly. When we were talking last week about the nice setup here, uh, uranium continues to behave very bullishly. Obviously, any time uh, any commodity or any security comes back to its previous highs, it's always technically a significant moment to watch what it does along that resistance point. And so uh, we are approaching a previous high, and it's important to note that. But overall, uh, uranium's been very well bulled and very well accumulated over the last month. And I think uh, giving the bulls the benefit of the doubt that they're going to punch it to new highs is, a, I think, a still a very reasonable proposition here. So it'll be interesting to see whether that bull breakout occurs. Well, I think this is a really interesting one because, what is it, something like 40% of all nuclear reactor fuel in the world comes out of Russia. 
So the source of enriched uranium for running reactors, a lot of it comes out of Russia. And sure, maybe we're going to see a resolution to the immediate Ukraine war tension. But do we really think we're going to normalize relations with Russia to the point where everybody's comfortable with the West continuing to buy most of its nuclear reactor fuel from Russia? Uh, I don't think so. And if Russia is not going to be the source, the price has to go higher from here. Let's move on to fixed income, Patrick. In the next several charts, we've got everything from the two-year yield all the way up through the 30-year yield. What's happening here? Yeah, I just really wanted to highlight, uh, just when uh, put a visual chart up on these yields that we talk about. And uh, it's just uh, amazing to see the, the, the punch higher that we're seeing in, in these yields. The two-year yield is almost accelerating to the upside in the last month. Same with that five-year. Uh, we're just almost getting into a parabolic phase. This is uh, leading to some very ugly bond drops uh, and a lot of stress coming in in the bond markets. And I'm actually a little bit surprised that the equity markets are not being overly nervous about this. But uh, definitely when you're looking at all of these yields, they're pressing higher. And the, the rate of the increase in these yields seems to be just accelerating the rate of change. It'll be really interesting to see whether we just have some sort of a bond event in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it just feels like there's a lot of stress here. Well, Patrick, I've always said, don't worry about a stock market crash. It's the bond market crash that really tells you the economy is in trouble. So let's keep our fingers crossed that that doesn't happen. That concludes this edition of Macro Voices. Be sure to tune in each week to hear feature interviews with the brightest minds in finance and macroeconomics. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com, the Internet's premier source of online education for traders. Please visit BigPictureTrading.com for more information. Please register your free account at MacroVoices.com. Once registered, you'll receive our free weekly research roundup email containing links to supporting documents from our featured guests and the very best free financial content our volunteer research team could find on the Internet each week. You'll also gain access to our free listener discussion forums and research library. And the more registered users we have, the more we'll be able to recruit high-profile feature interview guests for future programs. So please register your free account today at MacroVoices.com if you haven't already. You can subscribe to Macro Voices on iTunes to have Macro Voices automatically delivered to your mobile device each week free of charge. You can email questions for the program to mailbag at macrovoices.com and we'll answer your questions on the air from time to time in our mailbag segment. Macro Voices is presented for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information presented on Macro Voices should not be construed as investment advice. Always consult a licensed investment professional before making investment decisions. The views and opinions expressed on Macro Voices are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's hosts or sponsors. Macro Voices, its producers, sponsors, and hosts Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based on information or viewpoints presented on Macro Voices. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com and by funding from Fourth Turning Capital Management, LLC. For more information, visit MacroVoices.com.